Another thing to notice about this is the asterisk, the footnote. This is only true when measured with light of vacuum wavelength 589 nanometers. So this table is specifically for a single wavelength. That is because light experiences something called dispersion. Dispersion is the process of separating polychromatic light into its different wavelengths. Dispersion, the process of separating polychromatic light into its different wavelengths. Polychromatic. Kevin, what does the word polychromatic mean? Um, multiple. Poly means many, yes, multiple. Colors. Colors. Chromatic refers to the different wavelengths or different colors. Polychromatic light simply means light with many different wavelengths or many different colors. Because visible light, we talk about the wavelength of visible light, you are referring to a specific color. So, the idea here is uh, light can be dispersed because different wavelengths are going to have different indices of refraction. If you send polychromatic or white light at a prism, it will be separated into its constituent uh, wavelengths or different colors because different colors will have different indexes of refraction and therefore will be bent uh, more or less than others. So you can bend it into its various components, color components. Okay. Next, how do we work? with this. We have Snell's Law. Snell's Law looks like this. The incident index of refraction times the sine of the incident angle is equal to the refracting index of refraction times the sine of the refracted angle. And Snell's Law bears the distinction of being having the highest ratio of difficulty to say divided by difficulty to use of any of the equations we have. It is one of the most difficult equations to actually read and say and talk about, but it is one of the easiest equations to work with. So let's take a look for a moment at some specifics. We have the index of refraction of air. We also know the index of refraction of water is equal to 1.333. So let's go back and look at the original picture. In this picture, as we go, as the light goes from air into glass, the index of refraction goes from being in a substance where the index of refraction is 1 to 1 where the index of refraction is 1.333. So the index of refraction increases. So as the index of refraction increases, the light is bent toward the normal. And the reverse is true. If we go from glass into air, as the index of refraction decreases, so if we go from 1.333 to 1, if the index of refraction decreases, then the light is bent away from the normal. Those are just important things to understand. Let's go through an example problem so we can work with and know how to use Snell's Law. This example problem that we're going to do is on page 567, practice problem number one. Page 567, practice problem number one. What we're going to do is, Ms. Martin, I'm going to have you read and Jeffrey, I'm going to have you translate. Okay. Find the angle of refraction for a ray of light that enters a bucket of water from air at an angle of 25.0 degrees to the normal. Usually the translator does something kind of in the middle there. Yeah. I've done the heat side or not. We'll see what happens. Sure. Oh, he's got it. Okay, so you have <clears throat> an angle of refraction. So if theta sub r is equal to? That's a question mark. Okay, that's what we're solving for the refracted angle. 
and then um, you're solving for the rate of light that enters a bucket of water from air at an angle of 25 degrees to normal, so that's theta um, i. What does i stand for? Um, in Incident. This is the incident angle of the light going toward the uh, boundary here. Okay, this is not all the information. There is more information. We have N, N? of air. N. Um, index of refraction. Of air is equal to 1.000. And we also have? Speed of light. Uh, it's good, not going to actually help us here. What else do we have? Um, index of refraction for for the um, refractor, right? Ah, but we need. The, we actually know the substance here. So what else do we know, Justin? Um, the index of refraction of for water is going to be 1.333, we already looked up. Okay. okay, we're looking for the refracted angle here. Please tell me what equation we are going to use. Benedict. Uh, oh, okay, so can you just tell me what it is? Refracting index of refraction. Yeah. It's very easy to say. Refracting index of refraction. Class, refracting index of refraction, please say. Benedict, keep going. Times the sine of the angle of refraction. Great. Okay. So that is Snell's law. We are going to use that equation. Now, we have an issue, however. We have two indexes of, of refraction. We've identified them as air and water, but in the equation, we've identified them as incident and refracted indexes of refraction. So which one is which? Beyond. Yeah. Um, we have the incident index of refraction, the refracted index of refraction in our equation. However, the, the nodes that we have Or the index of refraction for air and the index of refraction for water. I need to know which one is which. Um. What piece of information do we need to know in order to get this? Because this is this is important, very important for understanding this question. Just a second, Bianca. Nate. Um, well, it says from air to the bucket of water. Okay, so the key here is to know that we're going from air into water. That makes the index of refraction for air, Bianca, which? The incident or the refractive index of refraction? That is the incident, because we're going from air into water, so we go from the incident to the refractive. So the air is the incident index of refraction, and water is the refracting index of refraction, because it's being refracted into the water. So at this point, we have all the information. All we need to do is solve for the refracting index, I'm sorry, the refracting angle here. So let's do sine theta, I'm sorry, the sine of the refracted angle equals the incident index of refraction times the sine of the incident angle divided by the refracting index of refraction. And we can just take the inverse sine of both sides. We get that the refracting angle is equal to the inverse sine of the incident index of refraction times the sine of the incident angle divided by the refracted index of refraction. So the refracting angle, inverse sine, of 1 times the sine of 25 degrees divided by the refracting index of refraction, that's the water 1.333. The refracting angle, please.
18.48 that with two six or three six figs, 18.5. So again, it's hard to read. You do need to do a little bit of translation to figure out which is the incident, which is the refracting. But in the end, the math itself is not very complicated. You just have to be careful at the beginning to make sure you know what your givens are. I just want to walk through visually what this looks like. We have our air and our water interface. We have light traveling toward the air-water boundary. This is our incident ray that makes this the incident angle. Now, we need to draw our refracted angle. We draw our normal. And I need to know, does our refracted ray, which one of the two is the how we're going to draw the refracted ray? Where this is our refracted angle, or this is our refracted angle? Class, which one? One or two? The light. Does it follow a path that with two or the path with one? Class? Two. two. For some reason, somewhere between now and when you take the quiz, you forget that. Do me a favor. Don't. I don't know why, but for some reason, when you look at this dotted line, some of you think of it as a mirror. It's not. This dotted line, all it is, is an imaginary line we draw so that we have something that's normal to the boundary of the air and the water. It's refracted, right? So instead of going along a straight line, instead of following this path right here, it is refracted and bent toward the normal. So this is how we should draw. Instead of going following this straight line, it's bent toward the normal. So it ends up being that is how we draw our refracted ray. Right. 